Hi, and welcome to this video on Geometric Series Part 1, brought to you by the Answer Series. We're going to start by looking at the theory. The most important reminder here is that Tn represents the value of the general term, whereas n represents the position of the term. Make sure you don't muddle those two when you're working with a question. If we write out the expanded form of a geometric series, we have the sum of the terms a plus ar plus ar squared. The dots indicate the missing terms in between, and the last term will be ar to the power of n minus 1. The formula below appears on your formula sheet, and what we're going to do now is derive that formula, because you could be asked that in exams. I want you to pause the video, go through each of these steps on your own, and see if you can write up the proof before we go through it together, because it will be far more meaningful. So pause the video now and try this on your own. All right, let's see how you did. Step one is to expand the series. So you simply write out Sn, and you write out the first few terms. It doesn't matter whether you write out three or four, and at least the last two. You do that process again, which seems crazy, but you multiply each term by the ratio. So r times Sn. When you multiply a by r, you get ar. And then when you multiply the next term by r, you get ar squared. So everything shifts one over to the right. So the last term is below nothing because you multiplied ar to the n minus 1 by r in order to get ar to the n. Now you need to do a subtraction. Depending on what you've been asked to show, you will choose the order of the subtraction. So you can go top minus bottom or bottom minus top. We are choosing here to take the bottom row and subtract the top row. So we're going to get r times sn minus sn on the left. On the right, you will notice that we have identical columns for much of the time, but we have two isolated terms. So given that we're subtracting the bottom minus top, we're going to take AR to the N and write it first, and then we are going to take the A value and write it last with a negative in front. Now we are on to step four where we factorize. So on the left we take out SN, which gives us a bracket with R minus 1. On the right we take out A, which gives us a bracket with R to the N minus 1. Dividing both sides by R minus 1 gives us the answer we're looking for, which is that SN is equal to a times r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1. Remember to state that r cannot be 1. OK, if you can do that on your own, that's great. If you can't, pause the video now or come back to it later, but make sure that you are comfortable with this proof. Algebraically, the two statements below are the same. You'll notice that in the first statement, the ones are first, and in the second statement, the ratios are first. So we're going to have a quick look at that proof. Based on grade 9 maths, we know that if we switch the signs, we are going to get the same number value but with an opposite sign. So if we don't want the sign to change, we simply put a negative in front of the bracket with the switched sign. So in this question, we are going to take the left-hand side, which we've been given. We are going to switch in the bracket the r to the n and the 1, and put a negative in front, which undoes the switch. At the bottom, we are going to switch again the 1 and the r, and we're going to put a negative in the front to undo the switch. Those two negatives simply cancel each other out, and we have proved quite comfortably that it makes no difference whether we put the 1s first or the ratios first. So be comfortable with both forms of that formula. Okay, now the theory is behind us and we're going to focus on practical applications. I want you to pause the video and try all four of these questions on your own, and then we'll go through them one at a time. In order to answer any question in a geometric series, you need both the A value and the R value. A is easy because it's given. The R value, we simply take any two terms that are consecutive, and we divide the term further on by the preceding term. So we can either divide 12 by 6 to get 2 or 6 by 3. Either way, we will come out with 2. So we know the A value and the R value, and we are given Tn equals AR to the N minus 1 on our formula sheet. We substitute, 
and our job is done. Do not oversimplify because you will be wrong. In other words, if you look at the note on the right side, you cannot multiply the 3 and the 2 because the 2 has an exponent of 2. So if you were to multiply the 3 and the 2 first, as is done below, you would be wrong because the 3 is not meant to be squared and multiplying the 3 and the 2 causes a major mathematical error. All right, moving on to 1.2. How many terms are there? We know the value of the last term and we have worked out a formula for each term. So we simply equate those two, do our basic algebra and n will be equal to 10. In question 1.3, we need to write the series in sigma notation. We know that there are 10 terms, so we set it up with n going from 1 to 10. And all we have to do is write down the formula for the general term. Finally, we are going to work out the sum. While it is difficult to prove the sum formula, if you're not familiar with it, it's very easy to apply it. So we simply substitute 3 for the a value. 2 for the r value in both places where it appears in the formula. With the help of a calculator, we will get 3,069. All right, you should be more confident now. Pause the video again. Try all four of these questions on your own, and then we'll go through them together. The only challenge in this question really is the fact that you're working with a fraction. So your a value is 1 sixth. Your R value you can do by inspection. So if you look carefully, the easiest comparison is between the second and third terms. You can see that you're simply multiplying the second term by 3. So by inspection, you can get to the R value of 3, or you can take the second term, which is a half, the first term, which is a sixth, and dividing them carefully will give you 3. So you have options. Writing down the formula is trivial because you simply substitute your A and your R, and again, do not multiply those values because only the 3 has the power of n minus 1. In 2.2, we need to know how many terms. So again, we take the last term and we equate it to the general term. So we set up an equation which we need to solve. Now we have options. We can set up a log statement, which will look exactly as it does on the calculator. So if you're using this option, you're going for the log button where you need to show the base. So you type in the base of 3 and you type in the number that you are working with and the answer that the calculator gives you is the exponent that you need. Alternatively, you can also use the fact button depending on which calculator you have. So if you have a look at that, if you were to type in this value, 1,594,323, then press the equal button and then fact, it simply pops out 3 to the power of 13. So decide which method you want to use. Equating and solving gives you n equal to 14. In question 2.3, we are going to work out the sum of all the terms. We know from earlier work that a is 1 sixth and we also know that r is equal to 3. Substitution and careful calculation gives us the answer. Finally, we need to write this into sigma notation. We are not going to make the mistake of multiplying those. We're going to keep them separate. Remember that you have to give the start and end value of substitution, and we know that we have 14 terms. And in this case, because we know the result, we are going to set up our sigma statement and give the answer because we worked it out in 2.3. For our final question, we have something a little different for you. I want you to pause the video, do the questions on your own, and then we will go through them together. What is different here is that the value of the third term is 18, and the value of the fifth term is 162. So you need to set this up very carefully. The common mistake that is made is people leave out the formula when they write the statement. So if you just write T5 equals 162, it's not terribly helpful. It's far more helpful also with T3, not just to write T3 equals 18, but that AR squared is in fact equal to 18. Once you've got that written in, in the detail that's needed, the question becomes quite manageable because 
you divide always with the bigger exponent on top. So if you put AR to the 4 on top and AR squared at the bottom, and then you match the values that you have for those terms, you simply have to divide 162 by 18 to get R squared equal to 9. Remember, when you square root, you must take plus or minus 3. And now, because the question specifies that R is negative, we choose the negative answer only. We were asked to find the general term for the situation. So we take our R value and we substitute into something that we know. And we know that AR squared is equal to 18. Working that out gives us A equal to 2. We substitute into the formula and again, this minus 3 is kept separate from the 2 because it has an exponent and you must put those brackets in. They are essential. In question 3.2, we are going to work out the sum of the first seven terms in two different situations. So we're going to work it out if r is less than 0 and we are also going to work it out if r is greater than 0. So it's a little bit repetitious. We're going to start in the first one with a equal to 2 and a negative 3 for the ratio. And then it's simply substituting into the formula to get the answer of 1094. Just for practice, we can write this into sigma notation, remembering that we have seven terms, that we simply write down the formula for the general term. And as we know the answer, we can write that down. Second example is very similar. The only difference being that R is positive. So we substitute again into the same formula. This time we get 2,186. And again, just for practice, we can write down the sigma notation statement with the general term and give the result because we know that the result is 2,186. I hope that you found these examples helpful and that your confidence is growing. If you had any challenges here, simply go back to those questions and take a second look. Thank you for watching this video, brought to you by the Answer Series. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from the Answer Series your key to exam success.